Konnichiwa. How you doing? So we're now on book three of Miyamoto Musashi's Book of Five Rings, and we have reached fire. <laughs> So, fire follows the first book, which is Earth, Strategy, Water, Attitude, and this is the implementation of those principles. So, this chapter is, or this book is about fire yeah. and fighting, right? Yeah, the actual fight. Which kind of makes sense, right? That you've got a book called Fire, and it's about fighting, style, mm. application, fighting technique. Fighting fire with fire. Right. <laughs> so, one of the things uh, that Musashi starts the book with is is this kind of continuing theme of not pursuing perfection. Yeah. Right? But at the same time saying you're not pursuing perfection, but you must have utter resolve. Yeah. Right? You must go on the way. You must look at things without any hesitation, without any doubt, without any cowardice, without any fear. No. You must be focused on that way. Yeah. Right? On that lane. That's really important. Yeah. But you would expect that if you're dealing with life and death and duels and fighting and stuff like that. It's a continuous theme with him. Yeah. It's always like having resolve, being able to make quick decisions, and it's this honing of like intuition. Hmm. And it's this gathering of experience. And how do you gather experience? Yeah. Through training. Like there's no with him, there's just no replacement for training. There is no reading of books. There's you just gotta get in there. And you've gotta practice, practice, train, train, train. So that when a surprised, you know, when a situation surprises you, you're calm, you're in the zone. When you stay prepared, you ain't gotta get prepared. So it's like, now he's talking about actual fighting, and it's a little bit over my head, because mm -hmm. it's like actual fighting, and I don't do swords or anything like that, but it's always like, and then strike with resolve. When you hit the, when you strike for the face, then your soul, and I'm like, man, this is like really deep, but it's always those, being decisive, mm -hmm. being calm, being natural. Being decisive, natural, and calm. Yeah. Earth, water, fire. Mm. Right? I don't know if I'm misinterpreting or going uh, too deep with, with the metaphor, but for me, like, if this, this book is saying that you need to use the resources that you have acquired knowledge of from earth and water, mm. it's talking about the environment, right? Yeah. If you want to light a fire, what do you need? You need wood. Wood. Spark. Yeah. Spark. You need right, okay. flint. Yeah, fire. So, okay. so you, need, you need these various resources in order to yeah. kind of create that spark. And, and, and effectively, like, uh, you are using resources, like you're sacrificing them, you're burning something. Burning yeah. is, is quite a destructive uh, act, right? Yeah. Like when Sun Tzu in The Art of War, when he spoke about burning your bridges, like in the yeah. West we talk about don't burn your bridges. Yeah. Because... The idea is that you never know when you might need somebody. Or but one of the things that he talks about is this idea of making yourself appear bigger than, yeah. than you actually are. Uh, and that's quite an important concept in martial arts as well. Because, you know, when we learn technique, I mean, in, in Japanese, they would say, Jō hakyu, right? Which is basically big, smooth, and then fast, powerful. Right. Okay. So, so some people when they learn technique, they think like you know, in, yeah, especially guys, longer. right? You think <laughs> uh, you're gonna go strong, then stronger, then stronger, or like fast. Like you, you focus on things probably in the opposite way, right? Um, but the Japanese believe that like if you're looking at something, especially in swordsmanship, if you can do big cuts, right? You can make your arms move in a big way. If you've got yeah. a big technique, yeah. and you can then smooth that out, and then eventually you can you can add power to that. Then that's what's gonna make you invincible. In the West, we are people that. The height of thinking in sports is like chess, right? In any comp competition, oh, it's chess. But I re realize we're here in East Asia or Southeast Asia. They employ this idea of the go instead of chess. Mm -hmm. It's a go strategy, which is basically the least amount of movements to victory. Yeah. Right? To them, it's just what, what is the, the path of least resistance? And he talks about this. What is the shortest amount of movements you can take to win? Hmm. And I just, it's just really interesting. Like what we're talking about, like don't move, like with your eyeballs, they should be fixed, but you should be able to see everything. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's, and it's all about like focus on yourself. Anyway, I just cut you off with. No, no, no. I mean, here's, here's the thing, right? So pull it back to business. Somebody sees someone with a product on the market and they want to, you know, take 
market leading a market leading position. Yeah. They might think they need a gimmick, right? Yeah. Or yeah, a way yeah. to lure that person off the path. It still boils down to the fact that if you can do the same thing bigger, yeah. smoother, and quicker and more powerfully, then then you will overtake. You you will win. Yeah. Right? So I see that in business. Like some people think that like they, they focus on gimmicks. No. Musicians do it like, oh I want to be a famous band. Okay, let's get outfits. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The music is the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. want to be a good speaker or you know, you're vlogging. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that we're great vloggers, right? But but one of the things that we were quite clear on is we don't have fancy kit, right? This no, isn't the latest there is iPhone. no editing. There is yeah. no music. There is no, you know, transition. Yeah, there, we don't Content have is king. Content is king. Public speaking, exactly the same thing. You yeah. can't. Um, you can't top Trump, somebody who is a dynamic speaker, who's prepared, who has the content, mm. um, you know, pitch, pace, poise, all those sorts of things. So don't think that there's another way around trying yeah. to like, just go straight. Same with products. Right? You know, when you think about some of the great products that have come into the market, Ikea, mm. like when they had furniture, it was simple. Yeah. Right? Innocent smoothies, right? They said, like, there's no extra ingredients. Yeah. It's just, like, crushed fruit in a bottle, right? Yeah. Some of the great products that have kind of come and, and, and captured our imagination have just done something really simply. One of my favorite, like, um, it's a favorite restaurant of mine, Entrecote. Entrecote, like these steaks, right? Hmm. They just do steak and fries and a green salad and, a, a, and this kind of special green sauce. Not like, oh, we can do lobster or we can do, like, chicken or we can do, like, they just do that. Yeah, the yeah, only yeah. the only option In and Out. I don't know if you you never, you never had you've never been to the West Coast of America, but In and Out no. Burger, okay. and it's like they don't they they I don't know because I don't eat In and Out, but yeah. when I used to, it's like four different. St- I'm sorry if I'm just butchering this, but it's like four hamburgers, like yeah. three shakes and fries, and the lines are always long at every. Did you see that McDonald's movie with? Um, Michael Keaton. Yeah, uh, the founder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched it on the plane. So, so that, <laughs> that was a good movie. Me too, right? So, and we weren't on the same plane. Um, but that idea of just looking at the design of the restaurant and minimizing the amount of steps yeah. and, and, and yeah. counting the number of pickles and everything to get the same burger standardized as quickly and efficiently yeah. as possible. To me, that's the same way as is described in Mia Mus- Musashi's Book of Five Rings. And yeah. that's why we're reading it. It's not like we're trying to give you this kind of um, tutorial on how to become a martial artist. So it's like we're trying to interpret and then give you a practical application. Yeah. So this kind of getting rid of movements, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. body positions, tells, twitches that are going to distract you or they're going to like basically give the game away. So another thing that we learn like not to do is like, you know, a lot of people before they're going to attack, they, they might breathe in like, or they might blink. They have some kind of yeah. twitch that says, I'm about to. And that twitch gives them a split second in which they can react earlier than you yeah. think they can, right? Mm-hmm. Before you even raise your arm, your shoulders start to roll. Oh, you're about to hit me. Especially if they've seen you attack several times. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, that means that the arm's going to come up and then I'm going to hit. So a lot of it is about minimizing all of those movements that are not going to enhance what it is that you have to do. It's literally straight to the get-go. Yeah. It's like smooth, it's fast, it's strong. And it, it, in this chapter, he's talking about all these different, you know, fighting situations yeah, yeah. and keeping him in your enemy in positions that he's uncomfortable and that he's unaware and you're keeping him on his, yeah. on his toes and his P and Q's. And he has a saying that, you know, he says, today, I thought it was really deep. Something, I might be, today is victory over yourself of yesterday okay. and tomorrow is victory over lesser men. Like it's think about that. He said, mm. "Today is victory over yourself of yesterday, mm-hmm. and tomorrow is victory over lesser men." So it's always like first things first. You need to know yourself, knowledge of self. Yeah. So in business, it would be, and he talks about this like knowing yourself in the sense mm. that know your capabilities. Yeah. If you're given a job, a task, if you're given a position. You don't want to set yourself up for failure. True. You know, and that's how people can get themselves into trouble, right? They end up mm. taking a job, a role, a position that they got on a fluke. Yeah. Or someone like happened to fall out or they really want it or they, they put themselves in a position where you put yourself to fail. Yeah. And this is where he's talking about is like know yourself, know your role, and don't do something like 
I want to make more money. I want to get promoted. Don't do that if you're going to ultimately fail. Mm-hmm. It's always about improvement, improvement. And then if you see that statement, what well, today is victory over yourself of yesterday. Tomorrow is victory over lesser men. That's, I, don't know, that, 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 I thought that was a really, really deep. No, I'm just smiling because you like those kind of sayings, don't you? It's a bit like... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm like, <laughs> no, it's like this hot, cold, hot, cold of like Southeast, that's like jungle, then it's like a tundra, and then it's like a jungle, and then a tundra. It's in like, Indonesia, right? That's, <laughs> that's what he's trying to say. It's but like killing me. You and that Dr. Seuss quote that you said at a conference when we were speaking. No, I, I, I this is so, Dr. Seuss is, okay. Can he, you try and say it this time? Like, yeah, I got it, I got it, like, I got it. Drop in the ball. No extra cut. Go on. Today, you are you. That's truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. <laughs> so Dr. Susan Masashi is saying quite, si- that, quite similar, absolutely. right? Absolutely. You have to understand your uniqueness, you, your unique position. You yep. have to learn knowledge of self, and then you have to kind of get out there and do yep. things, right? Now, one of the things that he said, apart from this whole idea of ferocity and attacking and having utter resolve and focus, is he said you need to move as a shadow... Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Read that. Yep. And suffocate or unsettle your opponent's shadow. Yeah. Right. So so basically what he's saying is like, you know, you have to be subtle and sophisticated and and perhaps secretive in the way that you operate. Yeah. And at the same time you have to have the the intuition to be able to predict yeah. what you think that's someone what he, else is going to do. That, yeah. And that helps you with that kind of strike. He, yeah, that's what he says. He says that when you know yourself well mm. and you have taken on the way and you've decided to live, eat, breathe, eat the way that when someone attempts to attack you because you live the way and you've practiced and gained so much experience that he said, what did he say? He said that you can already, you already know where the act of his strike is originating from. Like that was just real too deep and spiritual for me. I'm like, wait, what do you mean? Like I'm thinking physically like, oh, it's originating, you know, from the right, you know, no, he's talking about because you are so immersed in this. And I think this is with sports, right? Because if you ask like an athlete, Kobe Bryant, hmm. uh, Messi, hmm. if you like pause what they're doing at this second when they're running, you know, taking the ball down the pitch, down the court, and you ask him, you stop it right there, what are you going to do next? They're making split second decisions. That's really yeah. deep. They're making split second decisions and you they don't even know what they're doing until like they see that their enemy or the opponent go left a little, go right a little. They know that his weak leg is left, but they're like assessing information so quick. So let me talk about defense, right? Which is also goes to Gladwell's book, Blink, which okay. I highly recommend, where it's blinking where you're able to build strong intuition or building your gut through just experience. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm glad. No, it's cool. The difference between uh, sport martial arts is like, you know, sport has got referees and rules and like you can, you can like have foul play and stuff like that. Yeah. There is no foul play in martial arts, right? Once you've decided that you're engaging <laughs> in fighting, then it's like you, you are dispensing with somebody. Time out. Time out. <laughs> time out. Don't kill me. I take it back. <laughs> in sport, you are occupying a space. Yeah. And you're inviting someone towards you, or someone is coming towards you. Now, really good defenders, actually, basketball, football, rugby, whatever, they move forward slightly to close down the options mm-hmm. and the time, right? So if you're a flat footed defender and you wait and you kind of like, you know, yeah. like this, it's easy for someone to go around you. But good defenders, cricket as well, you see when they, when they set their defense, cricket is like our baseball, basically. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, I'm sure they do it in baseball. You, you walk forward slowly. So that you you start to suffocate the, the the batsman. So how would we apply this to business? I'd apply this to business okay. in, in in this way, right? Do not wait for things to happen, hmm. right? If people are entering your market, right, you need to be making yourself bigger and you need to be expanding within the market, right? You can't stay still. You have to be moving. Defenders who are good are always moving. Attackers are always moving, right? So offend, sorry. Defense and attack are kind of the same thing. You are always moving and you're getting, you're making yourself look bigger and bigger and bigger. And, right? that, and that's a, a big thing. Okay, so, yeah. So, so th- this application in business is, I think people wait too long 
because they're looking for clear signs and signals before they act, right? And that's perhaps too late, right? So, for example, in fighting, what I'm saying is, the minute I see that your shoulder twitch, I don't have to see your arm raise. It's like, you're about to hit me. I'm just going to take you out. I'm just going to deal with it yeah. early. Now, that, in my book, doesn't mean, like, fire early. Like, you know, if you see a bad sign, then you just need to dispatch someone. That's a whole different thing that we kind of, I think we've debated it before. But what it means is that if you get a sense that there is something wrong in your internally in your company like there's a bad culture or outside of your company deal with it early yeah like, don't wait for the letter of complaint right yeah, yeah 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 use your intuition if people don't seem happy yeah then they're probably not happy right don't wait for explicit signals because actually because if you're waiting for explicit signals it's too close and it's probably too late we mentioned before that Miyamoto Masashi had a two sword strategy right? yeah yeah so we spoke at a conference in Jakarta, a marketing conference. Yeah. I probably I didn't tell you this, but like part of my inspiration was actually kind of doing some reading on this book, right? The two swords is like, wow. So I had to do a conference talk, like it was um five thousand marketers, industry professionals in Jakarta. So it's like kind of it's it's a big deal, right? So it was a massive conference. And I thought, what would make my presentation a killer presentation? Though that was actually my thought. What make it a killer presentation? Now I knew that I had to be tight in terms of my delivery. No. I knew I needed great PowerPoint slides that looked like billboards and all that kind of stuff. But I thought, Sashi spoke about two swords. And I just said killer presentation. I'm going to go, I didn't bring two swords to my talk, but <laughs> I invited Heraldas. <laughs> yeah. And, and we actually did a double team talk. Yeah, so it, yeah. it was a mixture of Masashi, oh. but, but also like, you know, it was a whole. Like, we were like, oh, let's do the Method Man, Red Man thing, right? Because <laughs> I thought, have people been to conferences and seen, like, two speakers using the same PowerPoint deck, yeah. uh, riffing off each other, basically doing, like, what we do in the vlog, but but delivering a conference talk? Has this ever been done? Have you ever seen... I'm always funny about saying, oh, I've never seen it before. It's never... I've not seen it before, but it's not so that it hasn't been done. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. But yeah. I, like, me personally, I was thinking about it afterwards, and I go, I don't think I've ever been present where someone or two people use the same PowerPoint where it's like slide after slide like they were handing it off to each other in the transition not a university and, presentation not a business pitch but like a proper conference talk where you basically yeah. go like yeah we're going to 50 50 this and you're going to talk yeah. about this I'm going to talk about this and yeah yeah not yeah. like a group presentation at school where it's like okay and my slide is this and yeah let's yeah. look at the <laughs> Porter's five forces now let's do a Boston consulting group is this the cash cow or is this the dog oh yeah we're in India so in India what you can't what is this uh, it's like one of your nasal American accents like, in India you can't say in cow because it's holy in India in the Muslim world you can't say dog because like dogs are considered dirty so this is like a cash cat and this is like a cash goat or some like you know so we didn't do like kind of like here have a slide but we actually tried to think of a way that we could do this yeah. almost like yeah the, the inspiration was Masashi Two Swords cut through but also it was just like from our hip hop roots right of like seeing two MCs trading verses and going mm. back and forth and having a theme under the same beats mm. and it was fun yeah, it, it was. It was it fun. Was. I'm not going to like say, oh, and we got these testimonials. I mean, that's like for whatever. But it was fun. It was hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I was, mean, it was. yeah, it would have been a lot easier for me just to do the presentation on my own. Yeah. Right. But it was fun uh, doing doing the presentation with you. I think that you tightened up my game because you like explicitly were like, okay, what am I going to say? What are you saying? And you know, what he's like, he's kind of pretty, you know, intense, right? <laughs> Uh, that thing about living in the desert. How, how do they live? Intense, right? So he was like intense and intense. Yeah, we just got a joke, right? This guy. But um, it tightened up my game. I genuinely believe that because before I've not had somebody that actually cares enough to go through my slides and to kind of and to spend that time through iterations, looking at the text and the, and and the pictures and stuff. So we did that to each other. And the other motivation was, I just wanted to do something new. Because yeah. if everybody is trying to do a TED talk, if yeah. or, is like, or, or all that kind of stuff, yeah. like, what could you do that's different? I was like, yeah. yeah. Double team. Yeah, it's uh, he talks about it. He calls yeah. it, like, in this book, actually, he calls it, like, crossing at a fjord. Yeah. Where he, you know... This they have fjords box. in Japan? 
big body <laughs> of water and you go through a strait. Yeah. And basically he says, when all your friends are in the harbor, you decide to go. Okay. Right. And he says, the reason why you go is because the situation is favorable hmm. uh, and the situation is advantageous to you. Yeah. But you are decisive mm. and you take this on. But what's interesting about what you said is that, yeah, you could have done it by yourself, but you're like, come on, come over from Malaysia, dude. You got to come and do this with me. And it's very interesting because it's funny when I was reading this, it made me think of the saying where boats are safer in the harbor, but that's not what they're built for. Hmm. That, I, I thought about that, and that's what you did. That's what we did. Because, and we doubled because, our network here yeah, because it's like it was, two people. It was hard. Like, it was, it, you know, it could, <laughs> have, it could have been easier if I did my own. Because they were like, why don't you do your own? And, and you were like, no, let's double They gave us the option, and we were like, no, let's do it together. And I go, you know what? Let's, let's, let's do something different. Because that's when you have the possibility to fail. When you fail, that means you're trying things that may be out of your reach. Yeah. And that's how you grow and develop. You've got to be able to do things that there's a possibility. You don't want to do something that you're just going to smash. Like you can, right? You might want to do that to get those little small victories in your life and be like, yeah. pat yourself on the back, like good job. But in your life to grow and develop, you want to take those calculated risks that there is a chance you fail. And when you do fail, that means you're trying new things. But us doing that, me for the first time, you for the first time, it took us somewhere like, whoa, that was pretty cool. And then the response, the feedback we got was phenomenal, man. People are like, we need to talk to you. We want to talk to you. And it was, some good things have come from I think it, it improved man. my, it's another experience. It's like kind of, once you've, it goes in the vault, it's a great experience. And I'd love to yeah. do more of them. And I yeah. kind of think, okay, am I trying to do like another hundred of those? Yeah, no, yeah, that's, it'd, it'd be cool. That's anyway, it. that's all I have from this book. Did you want to add anything else? Anything you want to add? Can I add something? Uh, one little bit before you add your little uh, your little cheesy thing. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about houses, it just reminded me that the Japanese, like some of the, the kind of the, some of the expensive houses in kind of feudal uh, Japan time, they were really kind of neurotic about, about being attacked. Hmm. And I remember I was in Kyoto and they had these uh, nightingale floors. So basically the floor is sprung on springs. And then if you step on it, like it goes, it squeaks. So that if you were trying to attack them in the night, then you'd hear like the floor goes, so you can't creep well, that's really. Security quick. system, you got that in America. It's called dogs. It's called you know brinks. It's but called... I, but I just think it's it's that fact that like for all of that effort, how often are you expecting your home to get broken into? Like you know there is a balance. Once right? is enough. Your home once is, is once because... is too much. I know, but then that means that every day that you walk down that corridor, your floor is squeaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you've rigged your home for fear of attack, but like you've yeah. got to live in that home. Yeah, that's true. So I think that there's also a balance when you read the. I just want to say, like, we read these kind of books on war, like you know, you could become paranoid or neurotic in the sense that people are always going to be coming to get. But me that's or, what he talks about. Mm -hmm. But if you are one with the way, yeah, and you're calm and natural, it, you don't even that you don't even hear that anymore. Okay, because that's you've decided to take that way of living. So expect competition. Expect it to come from unorthodox and unexpected areas. Focus on practicing your technique again and again and again. Yeah. Have a strategy. Have an attitude. So that Smash it with ferocity, right? You know, when, when it's time to do it, do it and do it well to the best of your ability, right? But Don't cut corners, but... Be calm. Yeah. Let it be natural. Okay. And with training and practice... Those spontaneous situations that do arise don't shake you at all. Okay. So I think that's what we're going to end with. Are you good with that? Hi. <laughs> Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you all good. for uh, tuning in, signing out from Southeast Asia. Peace. <laughs>